riding down the four wheeler and I've got some stuff in the back. Following behind me walking is a on tech service guy who's coming down to the cabin to install our Wii Boost. Ever since we put on the metal roof, we have lost signal inside the cabin. And so I wanted to get that reestablished because, you know, Lane and I work from our phones and we need a signal inside the cabin. I contacted Wii Boost. They sent us their brand new in-home Wii Boost, which comes with free installation. And so when I called on tech, told them the situation. I also told them about how difficult it was and it's been raining for the past three days. It's really muddy. And they said, well, we're gonna go ahead and send a guy out and they'll determine whether or not they wanna do it. So the on tech service guy, him and I walked down to the cabin and he's like, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it because he's in almost two hours away from our location. He loaded up my four wheeler up with all of the stuff that he's gonna need. He's gonna use my ladders and he's gonna go ahead and get this thing installed for us today, which I think is amazing. So a big thank you to the OnTech guy for going ahead and doing this and just rolling with it. He said he has never had an install like this before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unload all of his stuff. I'm gonna leave it here on the porch. He's walking down now. Uh, and then I've gotta go back up to the house. I'm gonna get my good camera because right now I'm on my iPhone. And then I'll be back down here to kind of show you the installation, a little bit of it anyway. What I'm really thankful about with this new WeBoost in-home, like a total in-home package, is that I don't have to do the installation because I have a ton of other things that are going on. Like right now, I've also got to go back to the RV because I got a guy who's finally coming to fix our door handle. So I've got to go back up there and meet him for that. But anyway, got a lot going on. So I'm really glad that when you buy this from WeBoost, it comes with the installation. Like I'm not paying anything right now for this guy to come and install this. So I just got a call from the OnTech service guy. He's already done. However, I did not get a chance to come back down and film any of the install. But Lane had some work to do. I had to watch the kids and that's just life. Sometimes uh, stuff works out when it comes to vlogging and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it didn't work out, which is totally fine. It's not about the install. It's about does it work? And that's what I'm more concerned about. And I know that's what you're gonna be more concerned about uh, for you is if you buy this, is it gonna work for you in your application? So I'm headed down now and we'll get it tested out. It's actually not facing west like I thought it was going to. Okay. It's gonna go east because uh, your tower is that way. -ish. Okay. So we gotta put it up there. So around. you're pointing, so that's just the antenna. So you gotta point that towards the Verizon tower. Correct. Okay. Uh, and, that, and so how do you find out where that's at? We yes. have an app on our phone. Okay. Um, you can, I, I had to Google it at some point for my thing. So you can find it on your own if you wanted. All right, so I've got currently one bar and 3G. Just turn on the generator and we just plugged it in. You have to have full green lights and it'll be up and running. Okay. So it takes a minute to boot up like a router. Okay. So now that it's full green, uh, it increased to two bars, but it's showing LTE now. Lower so our tech, tech, he's got four bars uh, showing LTE. Whereas with me, I'm only showing two, but I've also got an iPhone. He's got an Android, so I don't know if it makes a difference. I'm just glad to have LTE in here because that means I can at least work. So I got the guys uh, stuff in the back of the four wheeler. We're headed back up the hill now. But I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So I did offer a ride down the hill and back up, but they're not allowed to. Uh, so he's huffing it. And uh, he told me after I got down there a little while ago that he had forgotten something up at the van and had to go all the way back up here just for this one little item and go back down. So let me catch you guys up with everything that's been going on. I have been showing a little bit of the clips of us building the dam, pouring the dam, the concrete coming in and all that stuff. Yesterday, Jerry was down here and I was not able to help him at all, but he got everything plugged up and the water began to fill up behind the dam, making our little pond area. But a couple things this morning that we've realized is we've got a leak. We've got several leaks. Some of them are small, which is okay. Whenever you make a dam like this, you're not gonna get 100% of complete enclosure without a few small minor leaks. 
but we've got one considerable leak and you can see down here where there's kind of some water so what we've done is I'm going to be building a large pond over here in the woods we have a pipe underneath the dam it's right here and then Jerry dug a line running all the way over to where we're gonna have a pond and then this PVC pipe right here it's got a cap on it it's gonna be sticking up to the height of where the water level is supposed to be at so if I ever want the water the spring water to flow over to that pond all I have to do is remove the cap water flows but anyway, we've got a leak somewhere here at this pipe. We don't know where, but somewhere in through here, we don't believe the pipe is busted. We just believe water is getting in where the pipe is going through the concrete in the wall. And I would say several gallons a minute is flowing out of that, which is something we've got to fix. Now also we've got the water wheel foundation. It is done. I'm gonna be removing the forms from that. What Jerry is doing is he is kind of clearing out the creek area right now because when the water wheel is installed, we just kind of need a, a little bit of an area that's kind of cleared out so that the water then can flow on down its natural course. Kind of to give you a little bit of a reference point of how our property lays out. So our cabin's up there, the dam's right here. The spring, runs right through here and goes down that way but I've got another seasonal creek there is a spring up there but it's a small one mostly in the summertime this side of the creek is dry because it the water from that spring flows underground but our pond is going to be right over here in this in this field that once was a food plot we're going to build a pond over there at some point but we went ahead and laid some pipe and so all the water that is behind the dam is now going through where I showed you and being thrown out right here into this dry creek, which is then going on down to where it crosses the government. So anyway, uh, progress is being made, guys. We are getting really, really close. I'm excited to get the water wheel done so that we can get electricity to the cabin. That's what's next. So we got the forms off of where the water wheel is going to go. Now what Jerry's doing is he's kind of uh, creating where we want the water to flow. The spillway's there. We kind of want it to go off of the spillway onto the rocks. Obviously, it's going to do that. But then we're kind of create a little bit of a path right through there so that it can continue on down the creek. After we get that done, then we're going to be building the flume. We're also going to go ahead and let the water drain out a little bit more. We've got the leaks I mentioned, we got to fix those. So we got to get the water level down to try and figure out where it's leaking over there at that pipe. And it may not look very clear right now, but the water is actually very clear. It's just that you're able to, because of the sunlight, you're able to see all the way down to the bottom, which the bottom right now is a little muddy. But after the sediment kind of settles, this is going to be a very clear uh, I don't know if I'm going to call it a pond or a, a little lake. I don't know what we'll call it, a little pool. Because honestly, this water is so cold. Well, like I said earlier in some earlier videos, water temperature is probably in the 50s. Well, we've got a lot of gravel up in there. And so it's going to be very relaxing to just bring some lawn chairs, sit in this cold water, and even swim in here. Because where the dam's at is probably about four and a half foot deep. So it's about pool depth. So it's going to be a very relaxing little pool that I didn't realize we would actually enjoy as far as getting in it, but we actually will. It's in, in our guest will as well. As long as they don't climb up on the dam or jump on the dam or anything like that, we'll obviously have to make some signs to keep people from doing that because it could be dangerous getting up here. So we want to keep people away from the dam. So how are you going to pull the plug? Uh -huh. How are you going to pull the plug? I'm just going to hit, pull it, it? hit it hard. You're going to hit it hard? I don't know if it's going to do it, but I'm going to hit it hard. 
So Jerry made a wooden plug on this side. We got a chain on it. And that's what's plugging that 10 inch pipe. Once we unplug it, the water will start shooting through here. And it's gonna shoot through in a hurry. So we made up, put some of the tin down because we don't want it washing out over there where the water wheel's gonna go. We want it to go this way. All right. See what you can do. I don't know. Hit that thing again. You pull on it, no. All right, I'll pull on it. One more time. Oh, chain came off. Hey, look at that. But it lifted completely up, almost like a a door would. It just kind of flipped upwards. You see it? Is there so much suction on it? Pressure? Yeah. It's a roaring. We're gonna have to slow it down a little bit. What we don't want, like I said, is it washing over there and washing that out. Giant bathtub plug is what that is. <laughs> 